This is the Lincoln Journal Star editorial board endorsement interview with Matt Schulte, who is a candidate for <clears throat> Lancaster County Commission in District 3. Matt, thank you for being with us today. Um, we'll hear plenty of from you in just a moment. First, uh, Pat, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Matt, thanks for being here. I am uh, Pat Sangimino. I am a nighttime news editor here at the Journal Star. I've been on the editorial board for is it two or three years, one of the two. So one of the two. anyway, yeah, this <laughs> pandemic has kind of screwed us all up. Kit? Oh, hey, Matt. We, we've done this before, I believe. Uh, I'm Kent Walgamot, and I write about arts and entertainment, and uh, I've been on the editorial board for 12 years, including when you were running for school board, right. as I recall. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, um, again, thank you for joining us. So, Kent's, uh, Kent's observation there is a, is a good segue. Um, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a really fun time to be involved in politics. And you know the climate. You've run for office. You've been an elected official, um, and you're back wanting to do it again. Why in the world? And and then what experiences and attributes uh, do you have that qualify you for this? Uh, Great question. So I would first of all start out by saying uh, that actually I think I am I've been a servant I've been on the school board I've been willing to run for office and um, so I I don't know why sometimes I keep putting my name in the hat but I just feel called to be involved and I think actually right now this season is even more important than other seasons there is a major desire for change um, in both parties the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And um, if, if that's something we're gonna realize on the Republican side of the ticket, someone that, that can bring some change to the Lancaster County Board, we need someone who's got some name recognition, has some experience, um, has worked on a board before. And so in that sense, I feel like me entering this race makes a lot of sense, um, coming in and, and being an advocate for changes. I talk to people doing phone calls and knocking on doors, it's, it's amazing how often if I say it or they say it, hey, I just think we need some change in our local government, like eyes light up. People are like, yes, we do. Um, at some, a lot of level, Republicans are sick of what's been going on around here in our city and in our um, mayor's office and in our county. And so we, we do need some change. Um, and so that really is a big part of why I'm running, a big part of why I'm running in this season. But let me step back and say that it was over, it was probably almost two years ago now, about 18 months ago, my wife and I had been talking about, you know, after I was on the school board and decided not to seek re-election there, um, hey, I'd like to be involved, where would be the best place for me to be involved, and the Lancaster County Board, Board of Commissioners, just rose to the top of the list for a number of different reasons. <clears throat> the first one is that I've been a volunteer inside the juvenile detention center, juvenile county jail, essentially, for about 10 years. And so I've really worked closely with juveniles um, who are in jail. Um, that's been a part of my work here at Youth for Christ Campus Life, but it's gone above and beyond my work and has really become been an interest of mine. We're, um, and so I've met with one on one with kids in jail. Um, walked alongside them, seen some of the, the issues that kids face and, and would like to see some juvenile justice reform, which is obviously a state level issue, but it also is a county level issue as well. And so that kind of health and human services portion of the Lancaster County um, board really appealed to me more than, than other spots. So uh, that's, that's a little bit about why I'm running now, as well as my initial interest. And then we, like so many people in Lincoln got redistricted. <laughs> and so we had planned, I had planned to run for, the, for this office, but I was in a different district. And then redistricting happened in December. And we had to step back and say, is this still the right spot to run? And is, it, is now the time? And um, that's then where the, the conversation about change and, and bringing some 
new fresh leadership to the county board was a part of our decision to say now's the time let's go all right um well thanks the there's there have been issues and uh you know this is a, a statewide question but it hits home locally as well you know there were issues with the the, the state is now interested in sort of taking away the autonomy of the um Lincoln, Lancaster County Health Department. And there are some other issues, statewide issues, where sort of state control versus local control butt heads. Um, what are your thoughts on state versus local control uh, broadly and even specifically with, say, public, public health? The public health department? Well, first of all, I would say this is, this is an unnecessary carve out. Like, this is not, I don't see this as a state versus local control. This is an issue where one particular law had been passed a long time ago and was never resolved to meet the rest of the state. So we can still have local control by having a, a human uh, resource or a health department, a local county health department. They're not saying let's get rid of the health department. They're just saying let's remove their ability to um, you know, do these individualized mandates. And so well, can I, can I, I guess just I don't- yeah, okay. absolutely. Can I just ask one quick question? So, I mean, obviously the solution could be take away the carve out or give everyone local control. Sure. Yeah. I mean, do you do you support giving everyone local control? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, we don't we don't give there we've had issues right with that with um, gun laws where certain gun laws have been in place in some cities and not in other cities and that creates major issues. I mean, we've, we've seen people come into Lincoln, visiting Lincoln, and they're like, I don't even have a mask. Like, why? We haven't had masks out in Aurora for a year I, when they show up for the state tournament or different things like that. And so I don't, I don't think this particular mask mandate thing is, a, is I, I, I believe that that should be removed from Lancaster. Okay, what about, what about other local control issues? I mean, uh, conservation easements that there was a bill to, to remove the ability for a landowner to enter a perpetual con conservation easement. Yeah. And uh, is that, I mean, that's a, that's a personal land issue, I guess, not necessarily local control. Yeah, that'd be a property rights issue kind of yeah. thing in my mind. Um, I'm not familiar with that particular bill. On the, I will point out though, when I was on the school board, and I think this is true of um, what's going on in the schools, I, I feel like local control is important for local, for issues that really should be controlled. In that case, controlled by the parents. Parents should be the ones that are leaning in and being a part of the curriculum development and expansion. So it is kind of an odd balance between local control and state control. I just don't particularly see this health mandate issue as a local control issue. It's a statewide issue. Okay. Um We've got roads, we've got bridges, and we've got growing population. Uh, how do we meet the infrastructure needs for Lancaster County? That's a good question. I will, first of all, the number one way that we should be meeting this is by putting this ARPA dollars to infrastructure, rather than dishing it out to um, different nonprofits and all these other different things that are trying to be done with it. I mean, this is our chance to catch up on infrastructure. And so I believe that ARPA dollars should be directed specifically at infrastructure, roads, bridges, culverts, that sort of thing, because those, those dollars are not intended to create programs that are going to require ongoing tax dollars. Um, and so I think infrastructure is a great place for ARPA dollars, um, kind of as one-time dollars to be spent. So that's be my number one priority to say, hey, let's address infrastructure by using these one-time dollars for one-time projects. Ongoing, we do need to continue to address some major infrastructure issues in Lancaster County. I was down in Hickman yesterday and drove to Norris. I mean, it is ridiculous that we don't have shoulders on 68th Street. That road, that road has so many in, crashes and incidents and high school kids driving to and from Norris. That, that's an issue that absolutely should have been resolved 10 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe even. And so we have, we have I believe, misprioritized infrastructure. Um, and I would like to see um, tax dollars. I think the local government has kind of two main issues. 
protect its local, protect its citizens. The government has two, two main, not issues, two main charges, protect its citizens and provide for the common welfare of its citizens and infrastructure is clearly in that second one for me. All right. Well, you're a, you're an efficient answer, Matt. So, if you, if <laughs> you, you want me to like, ramble a little bit more? <laughs> if you want, you can. There's no law against being done early. I think shorter videos probably get watched all the way through. But, um, okay. So, but maybe this next one will just set you off. Uh, in the county, we've had issues with, you know, um, uh, wind turbines. Um, chicken farms. Uh, how do you how do you balance the competing needs of of landowners and developers versus the commercial growth? Where where do you side? How do you reconcile them? So one thing you may not know is that actually during the pandemic, I went and I got my real estate license. I'm not a practicing real estate agent right now. My my license is on an inactive status. Um, but I would, I would tend to really side towards property rights on that. Um, the people who own the land doing, you know, protecting their rights, protecting the valuation of their rights. And so I would tend to, on the specific issues you said, hey, say, hey, if someone wants to build a chicken farm, let them build a chicken farm on their property. If they want to you know, build some of these other things on their own property, as long as it doesn't infringe on other property rights. And I think that's where some of the wind turbine stuff and solar farm has gotten to an issue is that those, those have infringed more on property rights by, you know, removing, limiting development. For example, in Southwest Lancaster County, if you build a big, huge wind farm down there, then you limit what can be done with the rest of the land around it. So, I am, I am totally supportive of using non-fossil fuel energy. I had the chance last spring um, during the pandemic, my family and I, we went on a big national parks trip. We um, went out west and hit a whole bunch of national parks. And so we were out at Sequoia National Park in Los Angeles and then we came back to Las Vegas. And so we crossed the Mojave Desert. And we just saw out there, you know, tons of these solar farms, massive solar farms generating massive amounts of electricity. And I look at that and go, that's the right place for solar farms where it's sunny all the time. And it's not, it's in the middle of the desert where literally nobody lives. And so I have an issue with um, the solar farm and the wind farm. Those things I think make sense, but they shouldn't, they don't need to be so close to, to the city and inhibit our growth as a city long term. All right. Um, we've talked about a number of issues, uh, but they're all ones that we brought up. So what are your top priority? Oh, Kent. Kent, it wasn't my last question, but you can oh, jump in. Okay, well then go ahead. No, 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 no. Well, okay. Uh, go ahead, uh, Kent. My, uh, the one question I have development wise is, do you think that the county should be involved with and and probably help pay for uh, the development of a second water source for Lincoln, which is clearly something that's going to have to happen within the next 50 years. Well, I would say my I don't know a lot about that topic. My initial reaction is if it doesn't benefit the whole county, then no, that should be a city issue. If it's going to be a water source that serves Hickman and Waverly and Firth and Martell as well, yeah, then maybe we should consider it. But if it's if it's a city issue, the city should handle it. And secondly, uh, the other question I've been asking the county commissioner candidates is, do you see any areas where the city and county can be I consolidated for lack of a better word you know the health department got planning there are several departments do you see more places where that could happen because that to me strikes as a way to get government more efficient by making two departments into one essentially um i so i there's kind of two things i'd like to respond to there first is the consolidation of some things is good but 
people who live outside of the city are sick and tired of the mayor deciding what goes on in Panama. So health department being issuing mandates for Panama while the mayor comes in behind and she's the only one involved in the press conference and there's nobody from the county representing smaller towns or things like that. I, that, that, that is consolidation gone wrong. On the other hand, I do think that there are some play, probably are some places where consolidation can continue to happen. I remember some discussion a few years ago, and I'm not exactly sure where this even lands right now. So, um, you know, some of our law enforcement training facilities and things like that, I think it makes a lot of sense to consolidate some of that stuff. But um, I would tread cautiously um, as far as consolidation, because I think what's ended up happening is that the power has been consolidated under the mayor rather than under the county. I should have warned you in advance, Matt, that uh, Kent was going to hit the water one. Oh, that's um, fine. <laughs> so uh, my question, I, I was double checking something really fast here um, and I'm not having any luck. Um, it, the, the question I was going to ask before Kent uh, jumped in there was, he talked about a lot of things. What, um, what, what are your priorities, uh, either things that we haven't talked about yet or, or things that yeah. we have talked about that you'd like to, you know, people to know these are your pet issues? Yeah. So there's kind of three things that I always tell people that I, that I intend to stand for on the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners. Uh, number one is infrastructure, continuing to hear over and over the needs of infrastructure in our county, specifically roads and bridges. Um, I have, that's the first time I had heard about a water, water one, for example. I haven't heard that from any constituents or anything like that at this point. Um, so infrastructure is a number one priority for me. A number two priority for me is property taxes. Um, our property taxes and the Lancaster County Board's budget has just continued to exceed inflation excessively, and we need to rein it back in. <clears throat> I mean, the amount of property taxes we're paying in Lincoln uh, and Lancaster County is, is excessive. Over the last five years, property tax taking by the county has grown by almost 26% in five years. And I have yet to talk to anybody that feels like they're 26% better served by the county. Um, it feels like there's just more and more and more taking. The Lancaster County budget as a whole has grown 178% over inflation over the last 10 years. We got to rein in this spending. We've got to find a way to do that. So infrastructure, property tax. The third thing, um, I, which I think you guys would agree with, is that it's good for boards to have balance and not to be we be filled with only people who have the same values and same understanding. And I think, unfortunately, we've ended up on that spot on the Lancaster County Board and the City Council where it's all one way. And so my third thing would be I, I, I will represent conservative values. I will stand up for the Republican values that we have agreed upon in our platform. I've shown that I can do that on the school board. I can stand up for those conservative values while also working to move this, in that case, the schools forward. And so that would be my third thing is I, I want to be a voice of conservative values on the county board um, while it's at the same time finding ways to move forward as a community. Um, before I get to the very last question, I, you've you mentioned a couple of times, I mean, like with water that you know, that if it doesn't benefit the people of the county, uh, they shouldn't be involved in it. I, I, I was just double checking a map. I mean, you represent, if, you're, if elected, you represent Lincoln, parts of Lincoln too. I mean, you're, how do you, how do you balance the fact that, uh, that, that you know, I understand what you're saying about the mayor uh, and the people of Martell, but as a member of the county commission, you also represent Lincoln residents. Yeah, but the city council should represent the city issues. The city, city issues like city water sources should be addressed by the city, not by the county. Okay. I don't, I guess I don't, because then you are, you're, you're going to go tax Martell to put a water system in Lincoln. That's, that's not the right way to handle it. 
Yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I, I have a vote on the county commission and I would be interested in uh, having my views represented there as well, because presumably that's where I, that's why I'm voting. Yeah. Um, but you're, I understand what you're saying. I'm not. I mean, should I, I mean, so do you think somebody in Waverly should only vote for somebody who thinks that Waverly needs a, a new system in, in a, I mean. No, 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 no. And I'm not, uh, okay. I, I'm not trying to cause an argument here. I'm just, I, I vote, I will vote in the district three race. And because of that, I, I care about who's elected and presumably I have some investment in the county as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we are, I, I feel really bad. I don't know when Robin, hey Robin. Hello. How long have you been sitting there? About 10 seconds. Oh, what a relief. Okay. Sorry, we had an open house that went long. And okay. so- We, we are and, live, Robin. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and we are, we, are at, we are at the last question. Um, <laughs> But uh, if you had something after the last question, uh, we could revisit it because you might Looks have- Looks like Pat's thought. waving his hand there. I'll, I'm not sure if you see Yeah, that. I've got oh, one. Yeah. A yeah. couple of years ago, the, the event center was having some financial issues and uh, and I guess they, they asked for a, the, a big old handout. How's the event center doing? And do you think it's being utilized to its fullest uh, capabilities? That's a good question. So first of all, we, my family uses the event center for some, some events. My daughters do 4-H. So we've done the county, the, what are they called? Super fair um, and stuff like that. My boys are always doing, they do a Lego exhibit there every spring. And so we get a chance to get out there and use it occasionally for events. We did a tractor pull thing, you know, just one of those pedal tractor things not too long ago as well. So we get out there and we use, I think probably the biggest success that the Lancaster County Event Center had was the rodeo that they hosted last year. I'd love to see something like that come back again. I am a little concerned about what's going on at the event center. I feel like it is a bit underutilized. It's a large space, um, has a lot of opportunity, but some of that opportunity has been, I, I'm not sure if, Unrealized maybe is the better word. I think there's still a lot of chance to grow the use of the event center. Um, I think the majority of the growth, if, as the event center looks to do some continued growth and development, you know, maybe some new buildings or development, I'd really like to see fees for use of the facility be the primary driver for funding the growth of the center. I'm okay. I'm okay that there's a small tax authority that's being used for that, but I'd rather not see that double or triple to build a bunch of buildings out there. I'd like to see fees and use be the driver of its growth. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Robin, did you have it? You, you, you're probably familiar at this point, Robin, with the questions we've already asked. Um, no, I don't have anything. Okay, uh, so Matt, the last question, as I said, was kind of an open-ended one for you, which is, what what did you want to answer that we never asked you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I think you guys hit the main topics. You know, I think one of the most interesting things though, about this race compared to like when I ran for school board is that it is a partisan race. Um, and I think that that plays a significant, has a significant impact in who should be elected by the different parties. Um, for, I'm a clearly a Republican, always have been, um, I've, you know, shared several values with you guys today that shows that. But as we look, as we as a Republican kind of electorate look, the way we should select our representative, I don't think is necessarily based on personality or, but we should look instead at the agreed upon platform, the Lancaster County Republican platform, the state of Nebraska Republican platform, we have some agreed upon values that exist. And I think that should be the primary driver for electing an official in a partisan election is to look at those 10, I mean, there's a, more than 10, but there's really about, you know, maybe eight or so real important ones. And I think that's one of the, one of the reasons why we do need some change on this county board and in our representation there is that the current representative has been there for 20 years. 
And the longer she's been there, she's just moved more and more away from the agreed shared upon values of pro-life, um, you know, taxation levels. You know, some of these things just have, um, have we've lost our way on. And so we need, I would say, we need to elect somebody who's going to represent the platform of Lancaster County, who will stand up and be a pro-life, pro-public safety, pro-election security, pro-voter ID kind of person to stand with the Republican values in this Republican primary. Well, what would happen if an issue came up that you did not, that you departed ways with the party? It's, your, your message is a little different from anybody we've talked to. Most people sort of emphasize, I'm gonna do what's right. And, you're not saying you're not going to do what's right, but you're, right. you're putting a party first, it sounds like. Well, I think that's a very important thing. Just like I said, in a partisan election, when a party is represented, it's about it's selecting its representative to, to have someone that represents that and will fight for that, I think is important. Are there places where I do disagree with my party? Yes, there are. I, I, um, I believe last time I checked, and that might be the, the national party, for example, there was some wording in there about homosexuals shouldn't serve in the military. I disagree with that. I think anybody who qualifies should be able to serve in the military. So there are times, there are places where I have disagreed with my party, um, but there are probably four or five real key issues that are kind of non-negotiables for Republicans. And I'd say those are, you know, pro-military, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment. Um, those are the three that come to my mind right away. And those ones I would stand very firmly with the Republican platform on. All right. Well, I, I messed up the last question because you're supposed to get like the very final word. You got any <laughs> other parting words, Matt? Because uh... here's I listen, I've met with you guys before. I um, appreciate the chance to speak and, and meet with you. I know that as I look at the history, the chance of me being endorsed by you is probably pretty slim because I am a conservative guy. I um, have represented and stood for that throughout my years of service in the community and on an elected office. And, but I do appreciate the chance to share with you my ideas and hopes for our community. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, and, and thank you for spending the time. And just so you I mean, we, we have endorsed uh, conservatives uh, and, and just, you know, our view is um, an endorsement is sort of the beginning of the conversation. And I, I really like this Zoom format and being able to record these meetings because I think the educational factor and people being able to watch this interview is actually probably more important than what the editorial board thinks. I hear you say that you've endorsed conservatives, but I went back and looked and I can't find an example in a contested election where you guys have done that. Uh, well, we endorsed Ricketts. Is he pretty conservative? <laughs> As an incumbent, that wasn't a, he was an incumbent at that point. You did not endorse him in the original. Okay, well, I, uh, I, I can't, I don't have a good one off the top of my head, but. Um, so I can't, I can't disprove you right here. Okay. I think you guys, there have been times when you guys have stood with incumbents who've done a good job. Suzanne Geist is another one of those examples where you guys did endorse her in her reelection, but in her primary, you guys stood with the democratic opponent. And so I, and that's fine. That's okay. It's okay that people have that general bent and that's where you guys are. And, but I'm still willing to meet with you and work alongside people who have a different, a different understanding and value um, I have value. Value is not the right word. I think we all agree that we want Lincoln and Lancaster County to be good, healthy communities, but we do have different issues, maybe is a better word. And I, I'm totally willing to do that meet with people and talk with people about that. All right. Well, we appreciate it a bunch, Matt. Thank you for the conversation today. No problem at all. You have a good one. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Ben.